Welcome to our tutorial about converting HTML to an ASP.NET page. Let's start by creating a simple HTML page. You can see our form tags here. Let's go back to Design View and we'll insert a table. Let's make it four rows and 400 pixels wide. Okay. Oops, it looks like I entered 400% or something. Let's return to our source code and enter the pixel value right in here. There we go. Okay, now it looks right. This side will basically display the sum of two numbers. Whereas before we used controls, now we're going to use HTML. Let me drag on a text box, a second text box here, and a third text box. We also need a button. Submit. Let's call this result. Let's rename our boxes. This we'll call txt1. TXT2, and here will be TXT result. Okay, now let's go to our source code. At the top of the page, we see our page directives. These give ASP.NET the information it needs on how to compile our page. Next, we have what's known as a document type line. This is an optional line that indicates what type of markup language was used. If you don't use this line, it's possible that some browsers will interpret your page differently than other web browsers. In other words, for example, if you open the same page in Internet Explorer and in Firefox, they might look differently. And that happens to be a strong indication that the page didn't include document type tags. You can use different doc types. This is just the default doc type used by Visual Studio. The name of the markup language here is XHTML. It's a combo of XML and HTML. It's kind of a version of XML. You will probably never need to change the doc type tags unless you're working with, for example, some kind of legacy website. The next line starts with an HTML tag and it ends with the closure of the HTML tag. Between these two tags is the complete contents of your website. We also have a reference to the XHTML language right here. The next two sections of the website are the header. Here are the start and end tags. The header stores some basic information about a website like its title. There's the title start and end. This text will appear in the title bar when the page is loaded. The header will store other information like meta tags for search engines, descriptions, and so on. Another part of a website is what's called its body. Here are the body start and end tags. And the code between these tags is what's displayed in the web browser itself. Inside the body are the table tags. Here's the start and end of a table tag. As you see, an ending tag contains a forward slash. That's how you distinguish it from the start tag. Inside the table are rows and individual cells. What we missed here were the form tags. Let's put those in. Form ID something like Form 1. Visual Studio, as you see, automatically inserts the end tag. We can collapse this section of the table and just drag it here. 
Now our table is inside the form. Let's expand it. Okay, let's expand the table out. There we go. See this green squiggly underscore? If you mouse over it, you'll see that the form is missing a required action. Let's copy the run at server line from up above. Right click and copy. I'm going to explain about this a little bit later. Let's right click and paste it right here. And as you can see, our error indication is now gone. Inside the cells, we have two input boxes. Here's the text I typed earlier, result. And here's the submit button. Each of the text boxes, as well as the submit button, need the run at server control tag. Let's copy and paste it. And paste again. The last one right here. Basically, this tells the server that you're transferring control to the server. Next, let's go to the file default.aspx.vb. Here I'll select our button, Submit 1. Here we'll select Server Click. This action creates a handle for a click event procedure. Next, let's define some variables. Dim A as integer. Let's initiate it, equals, val, open parenthesis, txt1, dot value, close parenthesis. Next line. Dim B, as integer, will initialize variable B as well, equals val, txt two dot value and the last line our result result dot value equals a plus b okay it looks like we do have an issue I must have misspelled something it should be txt result. As you see, when I type in Telesense pops up to give me the appropriate choices. Visual Studio recognized the name of my input boxes. And now it should work fine. Let's run our program. We'll enter 2 plus 3 and click Submit, and here is our result, 5. Let me now say a couple of words about the view state. When we click Debug, Visual Studio creates a .NET assembly file, and then it places it on the server. That's where the computer stores code that we intend to execute. Let's make an analogy with a regular Windows form, which we've executed many times before. Before, when we executed a Windows form, we inputted data directly into the fields. Think about the process that's happening here similarly. But instead of inputting the data directly, you're using a remote access to the program. You input the data into the web browser. This browser sends it to the server. The server executes the assembly file, and then the assembly file stores our code. It gets a result, places it in the HTML code, and sends it back to the browser. So there's a lot going on here. Now remember, when we use a Windows form, it's usually one form per user. In this case, we can have multiple users for one form. Let's open the next browser, for example. I get a little warning, that's okay. Here is my result. Now the question is, how did the server know which information to send to which browser? If I right-click and select View Source,